como la presidenta de la Sociedad de Socorro, tengo que tener seis ojos. <risa> y um, es, es muy difícil hacerlo. Es este, sobre todo cuando tienes una familia. Tienes que también, como la Sociedad de Socorro es parte de mi familia también, entonces tengo que estar, tengo que tener mucho oído y mucha visión para y sentir sobre todo el espíritu de ver las hermanas. Muchas hermanas y hermanos este, no buscan ayuda, especialmente en la comunidad hispana. Nosotros como hispanos somos muy independientes. La hermana Cantú es una persona muy especial. Probablemente materialmente um, no tiene nada, pero el amor y el servicio que ella da a los demás y que me da a mí en mi hogar, es mucho. Me sentí muy mal al saber que ya no tenía una cama, porque me estaban fallando mis antenitas de la presidenta de la Sociedad de Socorro. Fue una experiencia muy bonita, porque fue la mano del Señor la que me trajo hasta aquí. Mi hermana, tiene Alzheimer y los niños estaban chicos. Para emigrar no puedes traer absolutamente nada más. Solamente tienes que traer tu ropa personal. Para mí ha sido muy difícil vivir en este país. He siempre dormido en el piso en la casa de mi hermana. Nunca me he sentido mal por dormir en el piso. En mi casa tengo mi propia cama y mi propia casa. Pero yo sabía que viniendo a este país, las cosas no iban a ser fáciles. Es una bendición tenerla en mi hogar. Este, ella necesitaba ayuda y la necesitaba pronto. Entonces, um, cuando yo la traje a vivir a mi, a mi hogar, yo no había hablado con mi esposo sobre eso. Yo la traje y le dije que si ya agarraste tus cosas. Y ella me dijo, sí, mi ropa es todo lo que tengo. Y yo no sabía que, um, que existía el almacén del obispo. Solamente pensé que nada más este, había como comida o um, ropa. No sabía que había un almacén del obispo que tenía camas y este, burós. Cuando la cama llegó, fue maravilloso ver que, que pudo llegar esta cama, aunque no tuvimos que ir por ella, sino nos la entregaron a nosotros. Fue maravilloso saber que la hermana Cantú iba a poder tener algo que fuera de ella, porque pudimos tener este, la oportunidad de ayudarla, acomodarla y... Me sentí muy bendecida porque mis líderes pudieron hacer posible que yo tuviera una cama y me siento muy agradecida por esto, mucho, muy agradecida. Estaba leyendo en Isaías que alguien que no tiene una familia, que no puede amar, aprender a amar como padre, como madre, es como un árbol hueco. Cuando los hijos de la hermana María me abrazan, cuando ella me dice que me quiere mucho, me hace sentir algo más como ser humano, que nunca he aprendido a amar. Han sido cosas difíciles en mi vida, pero ella tiene un don maravilloso del amor. Yo creo que es más lo que recibo que lo que doy. Me siento muy agradecida por la sociedad de socorro. Yo estoy tan bendecida a mi Padre Celestial y a nuestro Señor Jesucristo y estoy tan agradecida a, a nuestros líderes al que fundó 
que ayudó a fundar esa iglesia que, que es José Smith. Estoy tan agradecida por el amor que nos tuvo, que le tuvo a Emma Smith y de saber que ella podía ser parte de y tener la sociedad de socorro. Y yo estoy tan agradecida de poder pertenecer en la sociedad de socorro y de poder ser un líder y de poder servir a nuestras hermanas. Como nuestro lema es, la caridad nunca deja de ser. Me da mucho gusto de saber que si nuestro hermano Jesucristo estuviera aquí en este momento, creo que estuviera muy orgullosa de nosotros porque lo estamos siguiendo a Él en el, en el momento como Él servía y lo estamos haciendo como Él quisiera que lo hiciéramos. We lived in Vail, Oregon in, in, in the 1954 and, and there was a flood there and my dad was so amazed that uh, The LDS Church opened the doors to everybody. Anyway, my dad was so impressed with that that uh, he had the missionaries come over and we joined the church. And later on, I, I got away from the church and went off and joined the Navy and never never come back to it again. Yeah, I met Lisa in, in 1964. We were in, in uh, station, stationed in Taiwan and I met, I met her and uh, I thought she was the prettiest girl I'd ever seen. So. Uh, It was just an inst instantaneous thing for me. Actually, we met uh, Fred and Lisa probably 30 plus years ago. We moved over here in 99, and I think Fred and Lisa moved over here a few years later. When I saw on the records that, uh, well, I knew Fred was a member, so I said, well, why don't you let me be his home teacher? And I've got this little bit of a relationship with him at least, and I like him, so. But I remember Fred took me aside and he said, yeah, you can come over, <coughs> but, I don't want to talk about church. I said, no problem. So we just became friends. Mm -hmm. And we would come over most every month and, and uh, you know, just talk about stuff. And of course, Sandy, she invites everybody to everything. So they came to, uh, oh, she was three or four years worth of Christmas parties and Halloween parties and always bring the grandkids and that sort of thing. And, and then one day, uh, and Fred said, Lisa wants to learn more about the gospel. I was just really excited because Lisa has always been a, a really dear friend and we like to shop together and stuff. And so it was exciting. I was excited for her. And when I, I would ask her to do something, you know, different things and really exciting, she, she'd always tell me, I am not ready yet. And so, you know, I, I let her grow on her own terms. Sandy wanted me to be more involved with the church, you know. My parents raised me, you know, as a Buddha, you know. It's a Buddha, yeah. So I've never been in a church. I need a lot of help. They do, they're very helpful. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they, they, Sandy and Steve, they help us. Oh, brother, sister, they're very, very nice to me. Just like a family, you know. And uh, they're just fantastic people. They took us under their wings and, 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 and loved us. And that was something that uh, we really haven't had a lot of. So. Also, there's uh, my older son. His wife is a farmer, raised up for is a Mormon farmer, Mormon church farmer. And uh, so he and his wife and his children, five children, come to the baptize with me. They it touched my heart, and the whole family flat in here. No? And he, he, he said he's really proud of me. You know? I don't think there was a dry eye, actually. I think everybody just could feel the spirit and knew that it was, it was definitely the right thing for them to be doing. Lisa's a very, very sweet lady, and I feel that um, she exuberates excitement and cares for people. And, and the sisters in our branch, and I'm sure throughout all the wards, they're very loving towards new members and, and everybody. And I feel that um, they They connected with Lisa, and Lisa connected with them. And Lisa is um, very willing to learn anything, you know, and in service. She's very service oriented, and and Lisa and Fred are very um, 
family oriented. And then, of course, that's what we waited for the whole year. Was at the end of the year, then that we could once the, the year is that we could be uh, sealed together in the temple. And we went down to get sealed, and my son Michael was sealed with us all at the same time. So that was a. Uh, I can't talk very well. Uh, yeah. It was very emotional for all of us. Yeah. Oh, everybody wanted to come. Everybody wanted to come to the sailing. We had half the church was there with us here when we were able to get our temple recommends. Uh, it was like, it just finally got something we've been waiting a long time for. And uh, I'd been working so much in the genealogy that I was really anxious to get into it and to get where we could do some sailings and some. I had a dream one night and I don't usually remember dreams very much but I remember this dream. Me and my wife were sitting at the computer working on her genealogy and I just felt something. I looked down behind me I could see a whole line of people back behind me. And they were just waiting for the people that they were waiting for us to, to get into this and that's that's amazing. Yeah. But my 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 nephew gave me this uh, copy one genealogy genealogy book, no. For give it to me, and uh, this is why he get into interest and uh, get into read that, no. For this uh, back for two three thousand years like that, no. And so also this uh, my family land, and still haven't finished yet. Relief society, you know. I don't know how to explain it. They just keep you busy, you know. And uh, they just want you involved, keep you really busy, and uh, so many activity and uh, so many different things, you know. They, they, re they, they join for this uh, outside, the people, you know, the group, you know, and helping people, you know kind of community, you know, and uh, they're very much involved with it, you know. Our story begins in December of 2010. Michael took Ashley up to the, up to the clinic to uh, be seen by the doctor, and he recommended having x-rays done to check because she had been having leg pain. As soon as I heard that he needed to rush, I knew something was wrong, and the nerves started flowing. <laughs> I was very nervous and I knew something terrible was wrong. And he said, we need to go right away to the emergency room hospital. Uh, they took additional x-rays and um, they saw lesions on her bones, and which, are, which we ended up finding out were cancer growths. So we, we were life flighted. Uh, via a jet. It scared me. I was scared. Uh, I was worried. I came as a shock. Really, I didn't expect that to be what it was. Even. The bishop texts me at work and says, the Merrills are on their way to Seattle. There's something the matter with Ashley's leg. He, bishop says, you know, let's figure out what needs to be done. We had the sisters said, well, we want to send, make cards, and they did little goodie bags and everything right at our Relief Society meeting in December. So what happened was I ended up staying there with Ashley, um, and Mike ended up um, going home. And everybody found out and started out chipping in, and, and uh, the word just kind of spread. And, and Well, I just remember there were several families that came up to visit us. Um, in Seattle over the, I think the Christmas, Christmas week break. We had several families that came up to come visit with us. And uh, I believe we got some cards. And so all of that meant a lot to us. And she started her, her treatment on Christmas day. But just receiving, you know, that peace and comfort and receiving the support from board members and family really helped, helped a lot. We, we, we had to arrange for 
child care from 6.30 in the morning when the dad left for work to watch the boys until it was time to get them to school and get them safely delivered to school until uh, their dad got home between you know, four and five. Uh, we also needed to have people who were available to watch the boys on weekends when they couldn't go with their dad. I'm absolutely, absolutely amazed at the sisters who stepped up to pitch in and be home for these boys. We tried to keep it as as little disruption and chaos for the boys as we could. I could call sisters up and in less than an hour's time find a family who could keep with them through the weekend with, you know, literally I'm calling up saying, can, can you have the boys dropped off for the weekend in an hour? <laughs> I'm just absolutely blown away and amazed at how these sisters in our ward stepped up and filled in. The sign, the yeah. sign up sheets were amazing because the, sitting in the front of the Relief Society room as a presidency, the sign-up sheet would go around completely blank. And then by the time it would get to us, it was always full. And I can remember thinking, I would like to do something. I would like to send a meal. But the sign-up sheets were always, always full. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, not to mention everything they did to help Joanna out, but helping me out with the boys was just huge. Great blessing. I think realizing uh, the Lord's, help, Lord's love for each of us, how much He loves you through other people, how much we um, love to, how much I think I learned how much He loves these little children. I think for me, um, probably the biggest thing would be um, realizing how much prayers, or maybe a reminder of how much prayers really work. Um, my mom said that, like from in the temple from like Utah to California, um, she was on the pr the uh, prayer list. And all along the way, it did improve. Each scans, um, it showed it was she was getting better. And the last scans that she had were in the first week of April, and they showed um, that she had no signs of cancer. We hear so good. much from prophets and apostles that we need to go out and serve, and sometimes we need a little extra shove or push or something like this comes along that helps us to get out there and do it and then it's like the light bulb goes on over your head and you realize this is what I need to be doing, this is why I'm here, this is what's important and this is really what's going to help build my testimony and help others in the process. And I, I still remember a fast and testimony meeting that it was part way through and for some reason Joanna was able to come home for that weekend with Ashley and I was bearing my testimony and she walked in the back and it was just, just the overpowering love of, oh my gosh, she's there, Ashley's there, look at her, you know, and then. It's amazing how beautiful the sight of one little, little bald girl can be. One little be. bald little girl and then when this, when it's all done and a couple of weeks ago they came in, they're back, they're in our ward and Ashley's hair is beautiful, it's growing back. And her dad went up to bear his testimony. And she ran down the aisle after him. And I was like, yes, she's running. Yeah. She can run. I feel really, really blessed to be here. Um, I see the first ward and uh, be a part of this Wards Relief Society, and I felt great love from them and their service. But it also helped me to, you know, to know that our family was taken care of, that I had had no need to, to worry that the kids are taken care of. And, I, you know, I knew the boys would be okay. They would come up and visit on some weekends. Um, on many weekends, they'd come up and visit, and I knew, you know, they seemed happy and energetic, and they they just seemed like they were being, you know, they were going to be okay. I think as a Relief Society as a whole and as, a, as an organization, 
I think if you were to look back at our history, which is what we're supposed to be doing this year with the Daughters of My Kingdom book, mm -hmm. you will see that what we are doing now has been done since the very beginning of Relief Society. Exactly. And that's what we are here to do, is we are here to, to serve. And to serve and strengthen families. Strengthen. That's where our Savior's hands. Relief Society is truly a beautiful thing.